Dear friends, I'm back with another machine on the Van Hub, which is pen tester lab from SQ Injection to Shell. Yeah, this machine is at beginner level, and we don't know we don't need to get loot, share, or access. For us, the goal for this machine is to get the initial foothold on the target. We can run commands on the machine, and uh, the link will be added into the description section below, so that you can download it. And uh, as you can notice here, the extension is ISO, which means that we need to import the ISO image into the virtual box or VMware. I prefer to use virtual box. If you don't know how to import the ISO image to the virtual box, please let me know in the comment below. I'd like to help you out. Before we move forward, if you don't mind, please subscribe to my channel and leave a like below. I do appreciate your help and support. So enough said. Let's just get started. We can switch into the. Kali Linux VM, which is running with VirtualBox. Above all, we need to identify the IP address of the target as two hundred and fifty-four by the utility like NetDiscover. Then, what we need to do is to do the map scanning to save time of this video. I've already done the map scanning earlier, as you can see over here. I used the normal options like scene scan, the version scan, the default script scan, and then I used the option of dash p dash to do the comprehensive scan. Then I used the option of uppercase p n not to do the live testing for the target. In other words, we we will assume that the target is always online. And、uh, I'll use the option of ON to save the result into this file. From the map scanning, we can tell that the target has two open ports. The first one is twenty two, which is running SSH surface or secure shell surface, and its corresponding version information. Although this version is a bit outdated, however. As we know, if you do a lot of CTF-like machines, this version doesn't have many vulnerabilities at all, except the username immersion vulnerability. This is not what we are looking for at this moment. And the secondly is eighty, which is running HTTP surface, and also the version information, which is Apache two. So what do we have to do next? We need to do immersion both manually and automatically for the web application running on the port number eighty. Let's launch our browser to do the manual immersion first. Let's put the IP address of the target into the address bar. As you can see, yeah, we got the page back. And my awesome photo blog. So I think this site will host, or is hosting, a、uh, photos. And you can check the source code of this page, which doesn't, yeah, a domain uploads. It means that we can upload files. Later we can check it manually. And、uh, similarly, we need to check whether this site has robots file not found. And we need to take a look at、uh, each links or effective links on the page. Here, got some description, and also below this description is picture like this one. And from the pattern of the URL, maybe this one has the SQLI vulnerability or SQL injection vulnerability. For example, we can use a single quote to make a simple. Testing, as you can see, we got the error. So this confirm our guess. The target, yeah, this 
URL has or ID parameter has SQL injection vulnerability. Later, we can use professional utility SQL map to do the more detailed testing and immersion. For now, we just put aside to do further more immersion, and we can click each of links or admin. Even we yeah here has admin a panel. Of course, we can try to use admin as a password and also admin admin as username. Sorry, and the login failed. And also, if you have already followed my channel, I always check. If we can use the login bypass technique to login and the password login failed. So now we have already completed the menu immersion. Next, we need to use some tools to do the furthermore immersion. For example, like Nigato. You know, Nigato can give us information about the web application from many. Aspects, for example, like a version information, the header information, also sometimes the exploits if the target has, and also the common files or directories. Although it's built in, what the list is a bit small. In this case, we cannot find something interesting, although like you can see, icons, images, directory. We do not need to to visit this this directory normally. And the next, we can use GoBuster to do the directory brute forcing. And although the GoBuster can discover some directories or files, I think most of them we have already noticed that during stage of the menu immersion. So to save time of this video, I will not wait for this to be finished. So now I think now it's time to make more detailed SQL injection vulnerability testing and exploitation. The two, the two or utility I'd like to use is SQL map, and we can use option of U to specify the URL, and uh, we just we can test. We can copy this URL. Maybe I can use single quotes to include the entire URL, and then I can specify the level. Let's press enter. I can see because I have already run this test testing earlier. So this time, the second time, this process will be very quick to finish. So uh, yeah, we can identify the backend DBMS is my circle. Next, we need to emulate the databases information by option of DBS. As you can see, the two available databases on the target, and this one, it's so obvious, it's so obvious that this should be our goal to emulate. So we can use uppercase D to specify the database name. We can copy. And then we can use tables option to display or retrieve all tables for this database. The three tables, of course, this one is what we are going to emulate or dump, because in most case, use users contains sensitive information like username and password. Dump. We can use dump. Yeah, do you want to store hash to temporarily file? Yes, I don't want to crack them via dictionary-based attack. I I'd like to crack with a more professional tool like John the Ripper. As you can see, we got the username, a domain, and also password. So we can copy this password, and we need to identify the hash tab for this password. We can use hash. Identifier, and we can put in here. Yeah, this is MD five, in、uh, most probably. Okay, so next we can use John the Reaper. 
to do the password cracking. Rock you? Oh, sorry. I need to save the hash into file. Let me can hashes, and then we can use John the Reaper with the list. We can specify with the list, rock you and hashes. I prefer John the Reaper than Hashcat because this is very easy to configure. You just, uh, what you, in most cases, what you need to configure is the, the word list to use, to be used. However, in this case, nothing we can get. Although it it's it's telling us complete completed session completed, so in some cases we need to specify the particular hash type. This case is MD5. Another problem will come up in your mind: how to know. How to know to specify the hash type exactly? Of course, you can use Google to make some research. For me, I'd like to use the help provided by the John the, Reap, John the Reaper. For example, we can use John the Reaper list formats. And uh, I want to know MD5. So yeah, this is how, how the MD5 is represented in the John the Reaper. So now we can use option of the format and specify format uh, or hash type as md5, raw md5. Because I have already made cracking earlier. So this the password is cached. And then we can use John Reaper show and format md5. I can see we got the password. Then I think we can log in to the administrator panel. Admin is username and the password. We just copy this password. Very simple password. Logging. As you can see, we have already logged in as admin to this panel. Next, we need to find the entry to upload to our like a PHP reverse shell, manage pictures, and also can add a new picture. So then we can upload the file like a PHP reverse shell. In order to do that, we need to prepare the shell. Oh, of course, I need to copy from two sets directly. And then we need to make some small modifications. I need to change the IP address to my Canon Linux and uh, also port number. Of course, you can leave it as default one. For me, I'd like to change to, to my favorite port number, which is 555. Write and quit. So next, we can upload this file. We can use any title like test and we can browse or navigate to our working directory. Yeah, this one. Add, however, no PHP. It means that uh, on the server or on the target, there's some filtering in place. So we need to bypass such filtering. So how to bypass? We need to get the help from the Google and you can use Google to make some research and this is the first link. And I always use this resource to bypass the file upload filtering. And you can, as you can see, bypass the file extension checks. So there's so many different ways to do. Normally, we need to try one by one. And for me, I like to try to the first change the extension. extension sorry. So to do that, we can go back to my Caninix VM, we can copy shell. Maybe I need to use different 
your name, file name, because in case this file will conflict with the earlier uploaded file, we can use Lui. And then now we can go back. We can browse. At as you can see, no problem this time. And the next, we of course we need to set up the listener on the Kali Linux. Yeah, this listener will receive the collection from the target. And for now, we just click at this file. As you can see, we have already got the initial share on the target. And because just I mentioned at the very beginning, we do need to upgrade our share to the root for this machine. And we can, of course, we can spawn the bash session. Yeah, Python is not there on the target. We just run bash. As you can see, we got the the initial for the hold on the target. We can run many, many different commands. All right, so that's pretty much it. I'd like to see you in the next one. See you in the next one. Bye. Have a nice day.